Are uh, we walking? What is, hey, Sarah, what is this uh, sculpture? This is the U.S. Steel sculpture. It's uh, them at work. It looks like okay. This is uh, okay. This, they doing steel, which steel. is a bygone era. <laughs> well, we still have. It's cool. That, I mean, it's cool that they still do steel, but ain't like it used to be. It, it, well, part of that is something we got to do from a federal side. Right. We can't be having China beat us out with the imports. We got to make sure right. that we put some uh, tariffs on them to make it make sense that we can get our steel from here versus getting it from uh, yeah. overseas. So that's a bigger challenge. That you know, I, I was going to ask you, uh, ask you off camera, I was saying that uh, to vote against Karen Freeman and to put you in as mayor, uh, the, the electorate has to be angry with Karen Freeman. Yep. yep. I mean, Harold Washington ran for mayor years ago, I think in 77, and no one voted for him, basically. And But they, but when, when people got mad at Jane Byrne, Chicago Fest and Jesse Jackson and everybody got mad at Jane Byrne, then Harold Washington became mayor, make a long story short. It was people, you know, black folks got to get angry right. to vote. You know what I'm saying? You right. know how we are. Here, here's, again, Mark, and, and I don't like just talking about it. I like showing you versus talking Who? about it. But remember what I said. I'm a community organizer. We're organizing, Gary. Right. We're organizing. So that's a little bit different than what other people have done. They've right. organized to get elected. We're organizing to change lives. Two different things what we're doing right. here. And I'm confident that we're going to show that before May 5th. We're going to show this before the election. Before the election. Now, if you can't, if I live in Gary, you came to my house, you know what I care about. I care about clean neighborhoods, safe neighborhoods with excellent schools. All right. That's right. And Gary, I don't know, I'm not going to put you on the spot, I don't know what the dropout rate, the m black male dropout in Gary, but I imagine it's very high, well, at least 50%. Wait, like wait, it let's is in look Chicago. at this. In Chicago, they say it's 65%. I'm going to have to say it's higher than 65% here in Gary, Indiana. Okay, you said, and let's just use 50. If 50% if of the black boys in, in Gary, Indiana drop out of school, I know a lot of them go back. I was a former high school dropout, and I went back to school. But the point is that, come on, you can't drop out of school, and you got to do some kind of post-secondary education. How are you going to inspire these young men, especially the young men, to go to school and then do some post-secondary education after school, what after I, high school? What, what I always tell people is this, Mark, at the end of the day, why should a black male in America want to get an education? That's the, that's the, that's the set the landscapes, so you know. And the truth of the matter is when they look around, they don't see success in their life. So why should I spend time learning something that I don't see working for me? So that's the, just understand the landscape, right? right? My testament to them, as I'm going door to door, block to block, all throughout Gary and in Ferguson and all over the place, right. when I'm saying to every black male and everyone, but black males in particular, is we care about you. We care about where you ultimately want to be and we're going to fight with you. Because what, here's the thing black males know. They know that they're getting screwed. They know it's BS what's happening to them. And so they don't want to hear you say, come get an education. For what? So what we're doing is we're saying there's 20 career categories. Lawyer, nurse, judge, doctor, construction, labor, technology. We're saying we're going to put you in one of them career clubs. We're going to work to help you become that. Part of that is education, and that's where this thing we call WRT comes in at, work, recreation, and training. If you don't have that, you don't have a balanced life. So we got to inspire them and motivate them, but they got to know you go fight for them. Yeah, well, you inspire young black men all you want, and people get mad when I say this. They go home to their mom and grandma or their auntie, mm -hmm. and subconsciously, people get mad when I say it. Maybe I should get in front of the camera and say this, but subconsciously, uh, black women, because they're overwhelmed with the travails of life, or they just don't know that your boy, you have to have what you call daily living habits so your boy can go to school every day, come home, and do their homework. It's called discipline. Right. And if you don't do that, you're not going to be hired. Because the black man is the last person they hire. He's the last person to hire, and he's the first person fired. So what we got to do, Mark, again, so when I talk about education, I define it as this. Acquiring additional skills and network. That's the purpose of school, to acquire additional skills and to network. Networking is key because you got people with degrees who can't find a job. And it's because they network. They don't have the right they connection. Got a, they got a weak network. Some people pick up the phone and they get yeah. a job. It don't matter how much education they have, they can pick up the phone. But if you stay in the neighborhood and don't go to college or trade school or something, how are you building your personal network to meet other people who are successful? So the purpose of school is to acquire additional skills and networking. Black men want to hear that. They don't want to hear this, just go to school. For what? Why am I going? Well, yeah, we yeah, you go to school because your, your mama or your daddy told you to do your damn homework and shut off that TV and radio well, and that computer and them video games. That's why you're doing it or else. Well, here's the thing. And if you don't that. have a parent that does that, 
that's what some, Here, the state got to come in and help. But but here's the thing with that. Again, we're in a different age than back. I'm 39 years old. Back in the days when you had to listen to your parents. Now it's all about independence. It's all about the students and the child having rights to themselves. Wait wait wait. So if you, you, if you had a 10 year old boy. If you had a 10-year-old boy, wouldn't you make your son come home and do up, his homework? Up, I would, but see, this is what I'm saying. If you don't start early on and build that respect with your child, your child got the right to say, screw you, and, and, and if you touch him, you'll go to jail. And so what I'm saying is it's different now. So what we got to do now is appeal more to people's inner self of being motivated and inspired more so than discipline and, and military-style structure and whatnot. So that, that's, that's what it's going to take. And if the if these black males don't feel like someone care about them, you can forget about okay, yeah, it. And, and that's definitely high school. But you know, we, we uh, the professionals would tell you that let's, let's take high school because you I mean because the kids they drop out of high school and grammar school. You know that because you got three or four bad teachers in third, fourth, fifth grade, second grade, it's over. But, you graduate, you're gonna drop out of high school. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just take high school. You know, in that ninth grade, is everything is in that ninth grade. What is your plan to improve the ninth grade proficiency of the black boys so they don't drop out in their sophomore, junior, senior year? Here, here, think about this, Mark. Think about this. Who wants to be wrong? Who wants to be wrong? Nobody. Nobody, Nobody wants to be wrong. Nobody. If you a male and the society say you're supposed to lead, you're supposed to be the head, you would sit in class not knowing the answer, but just so that you don't appear dumb, don't ask the question, and you end up falling behind. And the more you fall behind, it makes it very, very difficult for you to move forward. Then who do you have in the community that you can go to and ask the question you was too afraid to ask in school? And so what we're doing right now is every Tuesday is Education Day. We identify on the block who's excellent in math, who's poor, who's bad in math, and we're linking them together so that they can help them away from the class so they don't feel like a fool not being able to answer the question. That's now, Mark. That's not when uh, I'm elected. I know, I right? know. But as Mayor Gary, you're going to try to change the culture. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to change. Because some people say, I'm not an educator. I'm a legislator. Sure. I'm not your mom and daddy. I'm the mayor. Of, so if, let's face it. As sure. the mayor of Gary, when you become mayor of Gary, if you become mayor of Gary, right. Here, <laughs> you got to be people's mom and daddy. Here's the thing. Culture. You said culture. Yeah. Culture is defined as way of life. Right. Way of yeah. life. So right. right now, we're talking about every Sunday being family day, Monday being safety day, Tuesday education. That's a way of life we're trying to project and get people to adopt. And because the whole block is doing it, it gives you reinforcement. And with reinforcement, now you can be motivated and inspired. So that's what I'm going to do as mayor. I'm going to get these daily living habits fully up and running so that we can make sure on the economic side, businesses are coming here because they know we're spending money in Gary and not in Hobart and Hampton Portage and all them places. On health day, we're going to be making sure people are getting healthier, losing weight. Hudson, right there, the sports center, right behind us, right there. Uh, Friday, senior day. Our daily living habits will change the culture here in Gary before I'm elected. Uh, you're a dad. I'm a dad. Anybody who's been a, has raised children understand that it's, what you have to do with children is to teach them, and you should teach them, mm -hmm. delay gratification. And, and you and you talk to people, they want it now. Right. They don't want delayed gratification. Right. You say, I got to go to school for some award 10 or 15, right. 20 years from now. I want something now. Right. I can't wait. How are you going to change right. the culture of people? You got to right. tell poor people, now, you have to do, you have to wait a little bit longer for your gratitude. Right. Don't say the word wait. It's certain words that you would just inflame no, the I'm situation. Saying you have to right. you no, delay, no, no. delay right. gratification. I get that. But what I'm telling you is this. Instead of using certain words that will flare up people who don't know how to keep their emotions in check, <laughs> <laughs> what I do right now, my daughter, she's 23 years old. She said, Dad, you gonna buy me a car? I said, Sure, I'm gonna buy you a car. She got excited. She ready. I said, I didn't tell you when. Now, that could be 10 years from now, that could be 50 years from now. So the point is, with anything people want, tell them they can have it. Tell them they can have it. What you do, though, is you make sure that they know there's a phased approach to get it. And so it's certain things Siobhan got to do before she get this car. You're talking about delayed gratification. That, but, no, but I'm saying I'm giving you what you want. I'm telling you, I you're know. getting what you want. But I'm going to tell you how you have to go about getting it, and it's not immediate. And that's all I'm saying. Right. Tell them what they, they want it, they can have it. It's a matter of what will you do to get that. When you take that approach and you get them step-by-step -step process that to get them some victory along the way, they, they, can, they can stomach that more than You know, like you I know. said, I'll tell you on the phone, Gary's not going to improve until you, until you change the perception of, of Gary being scary Gary. Until you change the perception that Gary is a safe place to do shopping, safe place to go somewhere. So, I mean, the casino's way over there. So the people go side. to the casino, don't come to Broadway. Right. They don't come down here. Right. People in Hobart, I bet you people in Gary go to Hobart, Maryville to shop. Right. 
They don't, you know, no one wants to come here because of, because of perception of crime. I'm going to get the beat down if I come to Gary. So, so I stay away from Gary. Sure. How are you going to change that perception? Sure. So what we've done we, is seven zip codes in the city of Gary. Seven zip codes. We've taken each zip code and linked it to one of the surround, surrounding townships. So we got Merrillville, we got Hobart Lake Station, we got Portage, uh, Shreveville. Each one of them is linked to one zip code. And what we're doing with that, we're building relationships right now with those townships. So like Merrillville is linked to Glen Park. So we got mailings going in Merrillville asking them to come on 21st Street right here in Pulaski neighborhood and, and, and um, donate money to the children that's doing artwork. It's our arts team that's doing this here. We do that every single Saturday. Over in Lake Station, we ask them to support what we're doing over there with our eighth graders. So we're doing it now with mailings to these other townships asking them to come and give back right here in Gary.